place you meet you where you been i can show you incredible things magic madness heaven sin saw you there and i thought oh my god look at that face you look like my next mistake love's a game wanna play Bad guy's good for the weekend So it's gonna be forever Or it's gonna go down in flames You can tell me when it's over If the high was worth the pain Got a lot of these perfect lovers They'll tell you I'm insane Cause you know I love the players And you, you love the game Cause we know you're the reckless We'll take this way too far We can leave you breathless Okay guys, so this is how to play Blank Space by Taylor Swift. As always, we're going to cover the absolute easiest way to do it, but show you a few tricks along the way to make it sound really cool. Um, to make it in the key of the original, so you can play along to that, we want to put a capo at third fret, um, which isn't the way I played it in the initial video because uh, I didn't have a capo at the time, because I was at my brother's house. So I'm going to show you without the capo, just in case any of you guys haven't got one as well. But as I say, for the original, definitely put it uh, capo at third fret. Which would mean we're in the key of D and we're starting off on a D major chord for your chord sequence. And if I just give you a quick gist of the basic chords first of all, um, we have two bars of our D chord and then we need two bars of a B minor. Now the um, first way that we've got to cover how to play a B minor is of course with a bar chord. I'm not expecting that everyone who follows this channel to be able to do this but this is a second fret uh, A minor shaped bar chord. So we're barring with our first finger all the strings from string 5 to string one, and I'm making an A minor shape with my three weak fingers, two, three, and four. The far easier way to do it is playing B minor seven, which is an open chord, and it's played like this. No barring requ required at all, and we have all our fingers at the second fret, or our first three fingers at the second fret, and we have a first finger on string five, middle finger on string three and third finger on string one so if i give you the close-up although it will go a little bit blurry that's what i'm doing and this is a b minor seven so one two three and anywhere in absolutely any song where you see a b minor and you think oh golly there's that bar chord again you can do this chord and it's absolutely fine it sounds great there are very, really very few contexts where that won't work, though um, eventually you want to be working towards being able to do this B minor as well, but especially when we're in the key of D, so D being your first chord, this chord works absolutely great. Um, in the verse, we then have a G to an A, and all those chords are for two bars. Now, any eagle-eyed people amongst you will notice I played it a little bit different in the initial video. That's because I was playing it slightly wrong. I didn't pay enough attention to my chord sequence. I was just kind of jamming it. Sorry, I was on holiday. What can I say? So, just a recap of those chords for the verses. D major for two bars. B minor or B minor 7 for two bars. G major for two bars. And A major also for two bars. In the initial demo I was doing with this with eighths all down strums and palm muting as well. Without this palm muting idea. Two, three, four, B minor, two, three, four, one. And there and I thought, oh my god, look at that face, you look like my next mistake. Love's a game I wanna play 
I'm doing A major 3 in a line. I should mention I've also taught this way of doing an A on my channel, which is also fine. At a level where you're playing this song, you can kind of do one or the other. Sometimes one A is appropriate, sometimes the other is appropriate. So um, if you're playing this on the beat, just to get a handle on where the beat falls and the bars and beats work, you want to do eight strums of every chord, basically. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, to B minor. Four, one, two, three, four, G, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four, A, two, three, four. Let's loop that one more time. Three, four, one. If you want to do a cooler strumming pattern, feel free to go for it. Incredible things, magic, madness, heaven, sin. Saw you there and I thought, oh my god, look at that face. You look like my next mistake. Love's a game, wanna play. And if you want to do it the super easy way, you could repeat that for the whole song, because I repeated one chord sequence for the whole song in uh, the intro, and it, it sounds absolutely fine. But in the chorus, it is slightly different. We have D for two bars again. We have the B minor, also for two bars. But then we have E minor in the chorus for two bars, and then a G to finish off. It does make it sound a little bit different. Again, I'm going to play this on the beat, but if you want to do eighth strumming, one and two and three and four and, go for that. If you've never covered eighth strumming before, check out my beginner's course, strumming, andyguitar.co.uk, strumming lesson, level two and lesson two, and it covers these strumming patterns that we're using in this song. Um, or just do a search on YouTube, Andy Guitar Strumming Help, I guess. Um, so for the chorus, D, B minor, E minor, G, all for two bars. Let's play along together. In two, three, four. So it's gonna be forever. Or it's gonna go down to B minor. Two, three, four. If the high was worth E minor. Got a long list of ex lovers. One, two, three, two, a G. But you know I love the players. And at the end of every line uh, of of when we get to the G at the end of each you know round of the chorus there's always a pause so E minor two three four one two three four G two three four pause and you love the game now it goes from the from the D again let's go for a fold down strumming now one and two and two three four because we're young and we're reckless We'll take this B minor four one two three four one oh with a nasty scar. Got a long list of ex lovers. They'll tell you I'm insane. But I've got a blank space, baby. And I'll write your name again. Pausing after one bar at the end of that chorus. One two three four one. And you do that little pause. Um, cool, so strumming help um, in the verses. Let's say palm muting is done with the outside of your hand touching the bridge of your guitar, which is um, on my acoustic here, this white bit, but it's where your strings meet. And you want to kind of feel that bridge on the outside of your hand, like uh, on the hairs of the outside of your hand, I guess. And you want to just play the root note of each chord that you're playing. So in this case, first chord would be a D. And then the next string down, or if you're unsure of that, just stay to the middle two or three strings for every chord, and you'll get this sound. If you're too far this way, it sounds too deadened, and we don't hear any notes. If you're too far this way with palm muting, it sounds exactly the same and kind of like a banjo, so we want to find that sweet spot. If you listen out, there's no absolute need to do this, but when the chord sequence is so similar for a verse and a chorus, it's nice to do something different with the strumming to let everyone know that you're on a different section. And then to the B minor with the palm muting. And G, pushing down to the string six now, because that's my root note of my G chord. And an A 
root note on string 5. That's what I'm doing in the chorus. A couple of tricks. Um, when we're playing the D chord, for example, if you're not playing string 1, why have a finger on it, basically? So we're going to take that finger off. You can replace that finger with your the third finger with your middle so that your D chord becomes this, one, two. And then to play the intro little riff, because as guitarists we love our riffs, you can put fourth finger on the D string at fourth fret here. And that, just a demo first of all, if you want to go for this, it's not essential. It kind of plays the um, the intro riff from the song. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Little finger going down here. Third finger's not down at all. One, two, and then the little finger's going down here for the riff. One, two, three, four. Little finger off. One, two, three, four. Little finger off. And that's all I'm doing on the verses, really. For the chorus, you've got a lot more freedom. You want to let fly. We always want your verse, if you're on acoustic, typically your verse will be quieter than your chorus. Your chorus will be much louder. So we take away that palm muting and we let fly. Oh, it's gonna go down in flames. You can tell me when it's over. If you can do some upstrokes, that's fantastic. And three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a. So this is the strumming embellishments from level five, lesson two of my beginner's course, available for free at andyguitar.co.uk. And and a three and four and a. That's where I cover this strumming in depth. Two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four. Just strumming focus on that. One and two and a three and four and a. One and two and a. So we're making sure that two and four are louder. We're adding an accent. And, and one and the three, you're making it much quieter and just playing the thicker strings. One, two, and a three, and four, and then cover the strumming pattern in many songs now. On uh, Yellow by Coldplay is probably the best example. If you're kind of struggling with this one and you want more strumming help, and you do want to learn a song as well, you just don't want to learn a strumming pattern, go for that one. So that's how to play along to Blank Space. Go back to the beginning of the video now and play along to me and my niece Jessica playing, who did a great job on the vocals. And um, yeah, play along to that, no capo needed. And uh, check out any other songs at andyguitar.co.uk. But that's how to play Blank Space.